Good morning. Welcome to our first Kidney Corner program. I'm Dr. Wendy Kindig. I'm a nephrologist. That's a kidney specialist, and I volunteer with the National Kidney Foundation. And I have with me today Margie Evan Fort. She is the CEO of the Indiana chapter of the National Kidney Foundation. And today we'd like to be sharing some information uh, about your kidneys, chronic kidney disease, and how our nonprofit chapter in Indiana works to educate, screen, and assist uh, patients and families. So what is the scope of the problem? Uh, it's actually quite large. Chronic kidney disease affects 26 million Americans. Um, there are about 430,000 uh, people on dialysis, 185,000 with a functional transplant. And the majority of these kidney problems go undetected uh, until they're fairly advanced sometimes. So how do you define chronic kidney disease? We hear that term, but it's what does that mean? And it's really any dysfunction or um, structural problems of the kidney that persists for more than three months. That makes it chronic. What we worry about most are those that have reduced function or those that are leaking protein in their urine in an abnormal amount. Uh, one in three of us is at risk for developing chronic kidney disease, and it has been shown that if we detect the problem early and treat it, we can slow the progression and hopefully prevent some of those people from progressing on to end-stage kidney disease, which requires dialysis or transplant. Um, so what is the problem in Indiana? Uh, the problem in Indiana is there's over 8,500 people uh, last year who had kidney failure, and there had been 2,500 new cases, so a significant problem in our state. In 2013, if you look at the more common causes of it, there were 11% of our population over 18 who had diabetes, and that is the leading cause of kidney failure. That's about 40% of patients on dialysis are there because of that problem. Um, in 2013, a third of Hoosiers also were found to be hypertensive, and that's the second most common cause of kidney failure. Um, the, as far as other risk factors, if you have anybody in your family with a ki chronic kidney disease or kidney failure, uh, you have a history of diabetes or hypertension, you're at risk, and also um, there are other processes that, that can be risk factors, such as uh, race, certain races, so American population, Native American population, Hispanics are also have an increased rate of chronic kidney disease. Um, so we want to look at how your kidneys keep you healthy uh, and what, how do they actually function. Well, they basically are filters. They filter the blood and produce urine that is, you know, that you get rid of when you go to the bathroom. Uh, anyways, while your kidneys are filtering, they're filtering off toxins. And if those toxins don't get filtered off, they build up and that can cause the death from uh, overwhelming many systems. The kidneys also help balance your fluid. So we all drink plenty of water and if we drink a lot of liquid, well, your kidneys help get rid of what your body doesn't need. If you're working out in the sun and you're sweating and, and all that, it also helps to conserve the fluid that you need. It helps to regulate blood pressure and although the kidneys are not what we consider a gland, they actually do have um, hormones that they make or regulate. So the kidneys make what's called renin angiotensin that regulates blood pressure. It also uh, is affected by a hormone that controls calcium and phosphorus excretion in the kidneys, and that helps keep your bone healthy. That's parathyroid hormone. And then we've all probably heard of uh, EPO, EPO may be used in some of the states illegally. Um, that builds blood, red blood cells. Well, that's actually a hormone that the kidneys normally make to get your body to make enough red blood cells from the bone marrow. And when the kidneys are damaged, you often don't make enough and become anemic. The kidneys also help balance your salt, sodium, potassium, and some other minerals in your body. So that's kind of a brief overview of what they do. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to now kind of turn to Margie and have her talk a little bit about the, the Kidney Foundation and how that relates to these problems and what they're trying to do to help. Okay. 
Um, the National Kidney Foundation, I, I'm going to start back a little bit, in the 1950s actually developed because of childhood nephrosis. Uh, there were a group of parents that got together to um, raise money to try to do research to find out what was going on with childhood nephrosis. So that was in the 1950s. Um, in 1970, the National Kidney Foundation of Indiana was developed, and it developed actually because of a nephrologist, uh, Dr. Stuart Cleet, and an attorney in town uh, with Bingham, Summers, Welsh, and Spillman. That was uh, Claude Spillman. He actually was a kidney patient, and they got together on his back porch with a couple other concerned citizens, and they came up with the National Kidney Foundation. Now, today, the National Kidney Foundation, our goal is to prevent kidney disease, so we do a lot of um, health fairs and education about kidney disease. We, uh, we work on preventing any kidney disease, and then we also want to work with the families and individuals affected by kidney disease. So, um, also look at organ donation. So, we, we work on helping the individual, one, trying to prevent, then mm -hmm. trying to help the individuals and their families, and then trying to increase organ donation so that people will do donate organs and transplantation. So the Kidney Foundation, we have uh, public education programs, and some of those include, we do a screening to mm -hmm. address that prevention, um, and we screen for diabetes and hypertension, like you said, we, uh, those number one, number two causes. And then we also do um, education programs in the schools. We do uh, Your Kidneys and You, in which we go out to businesses in different places. And, and we try to educate. Your Kidneys and You mm -hmm. is a video that yes. you show. Yeah. Yes, okay. and, we, and we just try to make people aware of their kidneys. Because um, one of the things people always tease that kidney disease is not sexy, you know. And so um, you try to find ways to tell people about their kidneys. So we're always looking for something funny. You're going to meet our mascot later, mm -hmm. who also tries to reuse that to try to educate about kidney disease. We have a lot of different ways in which we try to educate the public and make them aware and try to get them to take care of themselves. Because, um, one thing with diabetes you hear people say a lot is deniabetes because yeah, people sure. deny you know what they need to change and the changes they need to make in their lifestyle. So we do a lot of education about that. Um, but then for people who have um, already have kidney disease in their family, it's a very expensive disease and impacts the entire family. And so uh, we do programs to try to help those families out. We do a scholarship program. We have kidney camp for the children, for children who've not, um, they don't get to go to regular camp because of their special medical conditions. So in our kidney camp, they have the volunteers, nurses, and people who come out and take care of them for that week that they're at camp, and it also gives their parents respite so that parents have a week, um, because our, their parents are so used to taking care of their children. So, and these, so are, these are kids that are predominantly on dialysis or? And transplant, and transplant patients. Both. So uh, we, they're both, and they love being together. It's a great camp. Um, so we have that program for them. We also uh, just, we have Team Indiana, and they're, what we try to do with Team Indiana, these are athletes who um, have gone to, they go to the games and they try to show people that they're healthy with their transplanted organ. So they do a lot of education for us. Um, there's I think, yeah, so it, it looks like you uh, you are doing tremendous amount in the community. Trying and to. I think maybe <laughs> we'll try to get back in the last segment and go and back through a little bit a more. A few more, this. okay. Yeah. All yeah. right, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. 
and we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret, only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy duty suspension to support her svelte frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back to the kid. Welcome back to the kidney corner. Uh, I want to introduce now uh, Casey and Jennifer Enzor. Thank you very much for joining mm -hmm. us today. Okay. Uh, we thought it would be important to actually have you meet some people who have gone through this experience of chronic kidney disease and just kind of tell you a little bit in their own words because obviously kidney disease affects a whole spectrum of people, all ages. Uh, sometimes they have a lot of warning, but sometimes they don't. And I think that was true in, in Casey's instance. So I just kind of wanted to start out and ask you about how you found out about the kidney problem and, and kind of uh, how advanced it was when you started and where sure. things went from there. Sure, so uh, I had um, started having a um, headache uh, in December, almost three years ago uh, and started getting some blurry vision in, in my left eye so I went to my family physician who uh, took uh, my blood pressure and it was uh, 240 over 120 mm -hmm. um, and obviously he was very concerned uh, the first uh, thing that he wanted to do was lower my blood pressure so we did that and then did a battery of tests at the hospital at St. Vincent's. So he admitted you right away. He did. Yeah. He did. Um, and it came back that I was in stage four renal failure. Oh, and just for everyone out there, stage four is the stage just prior to dialysis. So this is down when you're what we call GFR is, is quite low, um, you know, between probably 10 and, you know, 15 to 15 to yep. 30 percent. So, yeah. Anyway, so go ahead. And, and this was really surprising to us because uh, I'd been very healthy my whole life. Um, no family history of kidney failure or high blood pressure. I had a physical a year and a half earlier. Mm -hmm. So quite shocking in that, you know, all of a sudden we were being talking about transplant and dialysis, uh, you know, and, and we went from pretty healthy person and not really any side effects other than a headache and blurry vision to somebody that was looking at a very different future. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are wondering, well, didn't you notice any change in how much you urinated? Because we always think, well, as long as you're going, you're going to be fine. But that obviously is not true. Kidneys can filter water, but not always the poison. So right. did you, had you noticed any changes like that? Not necessarily. Yeah. You know, I, I drank a lot of liquids before, um, albeit yeah. some not healthy ones like <laughs> Coca-Cola. Um, but I, I did drink a lot, so I continued to just urinate at the same yeah. rate. So, so it wasn't an indicator, no. Right, so that wasn't real helpful. So just to be aware, that's not the only factor or things you need to look for. So so um, then obviously you went in the hospital and they went through all these tests. And then, and what, how was this? I mean, obviously you both were probably, you know, Affected. floored and yeah. affected. Can you, uh, Jennifer, do you want to mention just some of the things that went through your mind at this um, time when he's obviously sick and trying to get better? <laughs> it was um, just learning all about these things that we'd never heard about kidneys and nephrology and transplants and it, we didn't we didn't know what a lot of it was so we we started talking and, and hearing about dialysis 
then we started talking about transplant and um, living donors and uh, our first appointment I had remembered that when I'd been pregnant, I'd been tested and was O negative. And so mm-hmm. I said, well, sure, I'll do, I'll do it. I'm mm-hmm. happy to do that because I think I have that blood type that um, is, is good for that. Mm-hmm. And they educated us and said, you know, it's really not that easy. There's so many other mm-hmm. factors that need to go yeah. in, that need to, to, to be in play for you to be able to donate a kidney. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, we looked at siblings because we thought that might be a better match yeah. for Casey. But, um, so how many brothers and sisters did you look at? Uh, so I'm the youngest of five. So, oh, so um, we actually had... We, we had a pretty good sample group, and unfortunately, none of them turned out to be a match. And that can happen, so. And it did. And it did. But then my <laughs> beautiful bride turned out to be a match, which was... That's very amazing. That, yeah, from a statistical standpoint, that's a very rare case, I guess. Um, but we were very happy to, to do that. Then we were concerned about our 10-year-old daughter, Caroline, because at the time she was eight, and what that would be like having both of your parents, you know, bedridden for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. And a, an eight-year-old's life, eight to, six to eight weeks is a lifetime. So, yeah, sure. So there were some concerns there. Yeah. So you never did end up on dialysis. So your kid, they were able to catch you early in stage five then to, to plan for the transplant. Indeed. So that obviously in, is, is the best scenario if you, if you can do that. If you can realize at this point there's nothing they can fix, they can't bring them back, they're permanently damaged. You said you had had a biopsy yes. and it just showed scarring and they could never determine the original cause. So it was a rapidly, for, for, some rapid form of, you know, uh, like a rapidly progressive nephritis that, that happened and just didn't know it. Um, so no dialysis, but you were able to plan for the transplant. And then how did that experience go with you? It was two days after our 10 year anniversary. Oh. So, <laughs> Interesting uh, not, way to spend Not the way it. that yeah. we planned on spending it. it. They did such a great job of preparing us that, that honestly, I think, um, we, we were ready for it. And uh-huh. the, the thought of being able to do this and not have to go through dialysis, which was, a much scarier thought mm-hmm. um, because the dialysis, you know, how is that going to affect the family life and vacations and, and work? work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So really in comparison, the transplant, maybe six weeks of mm-hmm. being a little bit sore and, and not being able to do the things that we typically do, but now we do. Mm-hmm. So how about you at the time of the transplant? Were you feeling still reasonably good or were you tired or what no, kind of symptoms? It, yeah, it was quite interesting because, you know, in January when we were diagnosed, um, uh, was feeling pretty much 100%, and then other than the headache, and then uh, by April, I had deteriorated quite a bit. I'd lost um, 35 pounds. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the, the diet is very restrictive, um, and was very very tired, um, and um, so I was ready. Again, I, I think that uh, they, the transplant coordinators did a wonderful job of telling us what we could expect, the duration. Our employers were very much on board with allowing us to, you know, take time off. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the family medical leave, FMLA, um, was very, uh, mm-hmm. very much a benefit. Um, but um, we were looking forward to the transplant and getting to that next stage. Sure. So the transplant sounds like it went smoothly and you got back going. And now you're how many, how long out now? Uh, we are at about two and a half uh, years right and, now. And your kidney function is? Very, very good. And uh, as the donor, your kidney function and blood pressure have fine. normal. Obviously, we wouldn't be taking kidneys from <laughs> yeah. somebody right. uh, if we didn't know that long-term research had shown that uh, blood pressure and kidney function is maintained. Uh, they do very restrictive on their screening to make sure there yes. aren't any particular risk factors for getting kidney problems later in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got through all that. and. Um, you got kind of back to your normal lives. Yeah. And then uh, how did you get involved with the Kidney Foundation? Because I understand you do, you have gotten a little bit involved then. Indeed. Down the line. Indeed. You know, obviously you, you have priorities in your life before uh, an event like this. <laughs> and then you uh, reassess after something like this. And I, I thought that the most important thing that we could do as a couple um, was really um, try to volunteer and, and get the word out. Um, my wife's uh, office has done a great job of sponsoring a team mm-hmm. during the uh, Kidney Foundation walk mm-hmm. um, in, the, in the spring. Um, 
actually summer. Um, um, we, but for me, I thought, you know, it was really important if I could in some way give some of my skill sets to the National Kidney Foundation. So I volunteered to work with the, um, the, the board and have been working on there for a short period of time. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to give back because we are able to. We, we have yeah. the ability to do that. So I think that's really important for us. Okay. Well, uh, a very... Thank you very much for coming and sharing your story Thanks. with everybody. And um, I think we'll just come back with our next segment. So thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you. much, Jennifer. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret, only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy duty suspension to support her Schwelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Well, welcome back to the Kidney Corner. I brought a special guest today. I'd like you to meet Billy the Kidney. Hey, Billy. Billy's our mascot and helps us out in a lot of our activities, uh, fundraising activities, and he helps with our education a little bit. So, Billy, can you kind of show us where your kidneys are? You know, it's a little hard with this camera, but we're going to try and get it done. Yeah, kind of your lower back under the lower part of your rib cage. And how many kidneys do, does everybody have? Two. All right. So you have two kidneys, one on each side. And uh, what can you do to kind of make those kidneys work a little better? Is there, ah, yeah, drink plenty of liquid, yeah, and try to eat a healthy diet. So that's great, that's great. Well, listen, I think, Billy, you've had enough water. Do you need to make a pit stop? Oh, I guess so, okay. Well, anyways, I just wanna shake your hand, Billy. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you again. If you see Billy around, please be sure to wave. Okay, I'm gonna have Billy take off to make his pit stop, and I'm going. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Little activity there. <laughs> kind of lost our mic. <laughs> so I'm gonna have uh, Margie back. Yes. Margie. Welcome back. Oh, glad to be we back. We didn't quite get all the information out there in that first segment, <laughs> so know. we're going to come back and see if we can finish up here. Um, and I think we talked a little bit. Yeah. Joe, part of just wanted to say also that the Kidney Foundation, besides helping patients and helping the community to educate the community, to let them know about kidney disease, how to better take care of themselves. We also work with uh, physicians and people like yourself, <laughs> and we try to uh, keep education out there. So we have symposiums for physicians and other things that we do with the medical community. Um, but I also want to say how we um, support all this because the Kidney Foundation is on public funds. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we have a few grants here and there 
But most of our support and how we operate and doing all the brochures and everything we do is because people giving money to us sure. or the events that we have. So um, we have a lot of uh, special events that we do. Um, one of the things that people can do to help us out is they can donate old cars to us. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> and, an interesting. Yes. Okay. And so people can donate their car um, and that turns into money for us. So um, the car that's sitting in your driveway or whatever, you can get a tax deduction if you donate it to the Kidney Foundation. So it so makes no difference whether it works or not. No, and They'll we have... Just haul it away. That's right. And we will haul it away. You don't even have to just give us the title and, <laughs> and we'll take care of it. So that's one of the things we do. We also do, uh, most of our funds come from special events. And one of those are our kidney walks. Um, we've had um, kidney walk... Um, in Indianapolis, we do one, and we're a statewide organization. Uh -huh. uh, so we do one in Fort Wayne, we do another in Evansville, and another up in Merrillville in Northwest Indiana. So we try to cover okay. the state with the kidney walks. We try to educate and, um, and just have a good time and bring uh, attention to kidney disease and people who have been impacted by it. So those kidney walks are fun to, to do. Um, the ways that people can come and help us at our kidney walks or uh, our other events we we also have golf tournaments I mean there's all kinds of things you can get involved with to help and work with us we we are small staff mm -hmm. we have nine people to cover the whole state of Indiana so anywhere people can come and volunteer and uh, spend time with helping us develop those programs we appreciate mm -hmm. um, we also can give funds to us annually in in uh we'll send out material periodically but at any time you can go on the kidney web page and and do a donate donation in that way um and but you also if you make a donation your employer can match that gift uh some some employers you have to check and see if your employer does that so but, you would just have to ask whoever yes. your employer is and mm -hmm. see or you could do, encourage them to do that yes <laughs> You ask, are, do they have matching gifts? And they'll send the paperwork to us, and then the corporation will send a donation to match what you've given. Okay, so great. we like that. The, our biggest always surprises to us are sometimes when we get bequests and trusts when people have passed away and they want to leave something to the foundation to help a, a, the cause, research, or just give it to us so help someone else come through kidney disease uh, that they can be of help to. So. We um, encourage people to, you know, make their donation to remember the National Kidney Foundation because that always is a big, big help. So there's many ways that you can help the foundation um, and help the people who've been impacted. One of our upcoming events, though, that I do want to make people aware of is a gala that we're doing September 26th, and we're honoring one of the um, community's really good nephrologist with IU, Dr. Tim Tabor, and so he will be honored um, September 26th on JW Marriott. Okay. So we encourage if you're interested, um, know Dr. Tabor and want to come roast him. <laughs> <laughs> that might be um, fun. Yes, to um, just just let us know. Um, so and so you call. don't ha have to necessarily get an invitation. This is open exactly. to the public. Exactly. Um, and they could find, you know, we're showing this information now, but if they okay. wanted to find that information later, what, they just go to your website? They and come to our website, call our office, okay. and I believe you're going to um, provide the information of um, how to contact our office. So that gala is dinner, dancing, and then you don't, you have some sort of a... a, a Silent auction yes, that goes auction with that. And they have a live lot auction. Of... And we usually always auction off a puppy. That is so cute. Oh, you and do? People love that. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. That's and, right. I think I saw that last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, our gala uh, is sponsored by Indiana University, Fresenius Medical Care, um, IU School of Medicine, and Indiana Don Donor Network, and also Donate Life. So okay. um, they are, those people so. are partners to put that gala together and this year in honoring Dr. Tabor. So we always want to remember them. But we have many activities and things, uh, people who come into the office and just uh, mail out memorial thank yous, mm -hmm. different letters and things for us. We have a volunteer opportunity for just about anyone. Okay, um, sounds we're great. A very grassroots organization. 
Um, and I always tease people that if you tell me you have time, I can get you busy. <laughs> okay, well, great. It yes. sounds like it's for a great cause, and mm -hmm. I certainly encourage anybody out there that has any interest to, to yeah. uh, give a call. And I think this last uh, slide will show you how you how can contact. Us. Yeah, so you can do it through the website just mm -hmm. by calling. Uh, and there's the email address listed. Yes. And Dr. Kendig, I think one last thing, I think your next segment will be about our prevention, our screening program. Mm -hmm. um, and if we have an opportunity, I think we might have a slide, do we, of um, the screening dates? Oh. Um, and yeah, if we can- the, Here are the yes. upcoming screening dates. If we can put the screening dates. Right. And so if people want to come on, anyone, who has someone in their family that's impacted by kidney disease, diabetes, hypertension, they should be screened. They're at a higher risk. And so we want to encourage them to come to the screening. Okay, great. Well, okay. thank you for all that information. Thank you, thank you for joining us, <laughs> Margie. You. And we'll be back in a month to talk about the screening programs they do and how important they are and, and how we actually go about all the things we do with that. So thank you for joining us and see you again next month.